Hey, my name is Stephanie and welcome back to my channel with a different background and more on that in another video. So we're just going to ignore the fact that this looks different. Let's get on to the video. It's that time of year again. It is September, which means it's time to apply to graduate schemes. As I landed one and I applied to 154 of them, as you might have seen in this video, I figured it might be a good idea to share some of my top tips in terms of tackling this application process. Let's get into the ugly truth of graduate scheme applications. First of all, try to have an idea of what industry you would like to go into. Some of you might have a very specific idea on what you want to do. For example, if you studied engineering and you want to continue your specific interest within engineering in a certain field within engineering, that's totally fine. But if you're like me and you studied modern languages or something along those lines, something like less specifically catered to a specific role essentially the world is your oyster you really can apply to anything from like law finance supply chain marketing hr real estate you name it you can apply for it so it's just a good start to sort of google all of those industries and really figure out what a typical day looks like in these industries and also what these industries actually do to see if this might be a potential fit for you or to see if this is something you can see yourself doing in the future so for example, a very generic example, I know, but for me personally, I knew that at this point in my life, I preferably do not want to work until 10 p.m. at night every single day. So that took banking out for me. And obviously this depends on the companies that you are applying with and the particular roles within those companies. But generically speaking, that was one of the reasons why banking was taken out of, of my particular application process, because it just wasn't a fit with what I was looking for in the typical day type sense. The general takeaway is that applying to industries and roles that actually interest you will save you time and effort because if you're just applying to everything to just hit numbers you're just going to overwhelm yourself with the amount of applications that you're doing and if you get invited back on an interview and the more you learn about the role of that particular industry you find out that it's actually not a fit for you you've wasted all this time and effort applying to these particular roles. The second thing start early i know it's cliche with everything but start early make a spreadsheet of all the graduate schemes that you are interested in and try to figure out when the applications open up for those particular graduate schemes because often when they open up they close down relatively soon afterwards because they have hit the maximum number of applications these companies can deal with and also try to stay on top of finding out about all the graduate schemes that you firstly maybe didn't really think about i found job boards particularly helpful and i often looked at target jobs and right network to stay on top of my application game number three don't have a dream job don't do it don't get hung up on that one particular role at that one particular company it's not worth it because the chances are so incredibly slim that you will land that one particular job at that one particular company obviously it can happen but the chances are just very slim so honestly try to look for similar roles or similar graduate schemes to the one that is your actual dream job if that makes sense that way you're like specializing your application process and you're also increasing the chance of actually landing a job that you're interested in. I personally did that. I knew what industry I wanted to go into and I essentially, especially in the second round of my application batches, again, <laughs> watch my application story video if you want to know more about it. I focused all of my applications on roles and industries that I was actually interested in for. Do not give up. I know it sounds very, very simple, but please don't give up. It is such a discouraging and time-consuming process. Feedback is incredibly limited with all the one-way video interviews and the psychometric test the human interaction is just absolutely missing you're like there on your own trying to figure it out that's just the plain old truth about applying for graduate schemes your application is just a number to these massive companies who get thousands of applications for the same grad scheme and they use these AI mechanism to just filter through all of these thousands of applications that they get because there's no other physical way there's just no other way for them to get through all of those applications but please do not let this discourage you by going through this process over and over and over again you sort of figure out how to play the game it sounds very weird but you'll figure out what these companies are looking for you'll figure out how the process exactly works so you'll gain all this experience and knowledge 
which by just keeping on applying, like I said, it's a numbers game. It really, really is. And don't be sad or discouraged when your first 50 applications do not work out. In all reality, my first 90 applications did not work out. So just apply, just keep on applying, do not give up. Five, another ugly truth of graduate schemes applications. Not everyone going to this process will land a graduate scheme. There is more demand than graduate schemes out there. Demand is greater than the supply. You might just be incredibly unlucky in securing a graduate scheme, or you might realize throughout the process that a graduate scheme might actually not be the best fit for you. Or like me, you're just too late to the game. And that is totally okay. Grad schemes are not the only job opportunities out there. So do not freak out if it doesn't work out. For example, there is direct entry. Often these massive companies have their graduate schemes, but besides their graduate schemes, they offer direct entry routes into their company, which means that you will apply for a specific role within that company. And if you have a more specific idea on what exactly you want to do within a company, this might be actually a better fit for you because graduate schemes will often rotate you throughout the entire company. So if you have a very specific idea on what you want to do this might be actually a better fit also if you already have done like tons of internships and you already have had so much training on the job or you've worked similar job prior you probably also don't require the amount of training you will get at a graduate scheme so instead it might also be a better idea to just go into the direct entry route so a graduate scheme is not always the right solution for everybody and you can also try again next year i know it sounds painful but that is what i did it did not work out for me the first year around so i tried again the next year and what I did in between I found myself a job to fill the gap and it's unromantic and probably maybe not the coolest story out there but it worked out for me and in all honesty what you can do is also go to direct entry round gain more experience find a job that way but in the meantime apply again for all the grad schemes next year so if your direct entry round does not fully work out for you you can then always decide to take up your offer on the graduate scheme route if that makes sense. So do keep in mind that you have the chance to come back stronger the next year. I understand that's a difficult process and it's maybe not the right way for everybody, but that is this opportunity to apply again next year as graduate schemes are often open for students who have graduated within the last two to three years. So you have that extra year to apply, even though it's not ideal. I understand it's not ideal. I thought it wasn't ideal. It did work out for me. Looking back, it did, but it was not ideal. Definitely not in the moment, but keep in mind that you do have that potential option right there. Six, aim high. Honestly, aim high. The sky is the limit. Everyone applying to graduate schemes aims high. There is no reason why you shouldn't aim high. When going into the assessment centers that I went to, everybody tends to introduce themselves, they generally state their name, age, uh, which uni they're coming from and what they studied. Like I said in that other video, I was often the only Oxbridge student there. Most companies, not all, but most companies are looking for a very group of graduates and not just Oxbridge students. So if you did not go to a Russell Group uni, it doesn't matter. That's not something that should hold you back. You can still create a competitive application. The key to success is not just Oxbridge or a Russell Group Uni. It's definitely not. That's the one thing I really learned in this application process. Seven, keep a schedule. Often, right when you hit that submit button on the first part of your application, you'll receive either directly or within two or like three days, an invitation to complete an online psychometric test or like video game based test or whatever they want to call it but you'll receive that link and often you need to complete that within the next five days so try to keep in mind that when you hit that submit button you will then need to find somewhere in the next week to sit down for an hour maybe two to do those online assessments so if you have like all these exams coming up or you have to focus on something else you might want to hit that submit button a bit later so that you have time after your exams to focus on those tests and in general just try to keep track of the date by which you need to complete a video interview or by which you need to complete these psychometric tests or by which you need to submit a preference for an assessment center day or anything along those lines please keep a schedule on when you need to submit your application by when things open up everything like that because dealing with over 50 applications at one time is just time consuming you need to write the dates down because you'll get so many emails from so many different companies some of which will just be helpful because they will actually 
tell you that you progress a stage further into the application process, but others will actually be just like, oh, here we have some other direct entry options. Some companies automatically put you on the vacancies emails. So you get so much emails from these companies. So please, please keep track of dates because it's so easy to miss a date. And when you do miss a date, generally the portal locks and you just cannot go in anymore. Eight, treat one-way video interviews as actual interviews. Even though it might state that AI is going to look at it and no one will actually ever see your face, dress appropriately. You never know if HR is looking at it. On top of that, you also never know if they might look back at it when they have to make a decision on whom to hire and the only recording that they have of you functioning in a different setting than an assessment center might just be that one video interview that you did prior. So please dress appropriately. So also prepare for the interview and make eye contact with the camera because if I'm looking at myself I can see myself now which is great but I you cannot actually make eye contact with me while if I'm looking at my camera you can actually make eye contact with me and I know it's very unnatural and it's very distracting to look at myself because then I know that I'm in frame and I see that I'm a bit off to this side and I can more easily adjust I can do I can adjust my hair etc and it's harder to look at a camera but just try to sit down at your laptop and make yourself look at that camera. Generally speaking, you'll get somewhere between three to six questions. I think it's more often five than six or three, but I've seen a lot of concepts in my video interview days. And you generally have about two to three minutes to answer these questions. Nine, assessment centers. Keep in mind that these things take often an entire day. Some of them are a half day, but apart from one that I attended, all of them were entire days. So if you're in uni, make sure that you have your coursework done for that day because it's exhausting it's a lot of new faces it's a lot of new people and you're just not gonna have time to do any work because afterwards you'll just be exhausted you just want to run to mcdonald's have some comfort food that's just the way it is if you have a job it will require you to take a day off because there is honestly no way that i could have done work alongside the assessment centers that i have attended there is just no way and particularly i'm thinking about one and that was impossible the one that was a half day i'm like i might Definitely like after the half day, but in general, I was never really able to focus on anything else besides the assessment center that I was doing at that particular moment. They keep you rather busy. Often, if you cannot make it to the assessment center, this will also mean that it will be the end of your application process. I know it sounds really harsh, but if you can't make it to this particular day, you probably will not get hired unless they run multiple assessment centers. And if that is a spot that frees up any of the assessment centers, you might be able Able to join on a different date but in all honesty if you miss an assessment center or you cannot make it for whatever reason it will be the end of your application at that particular company if you have the luxury let's say you already have gotten a job offer from a job that you think is very interesting you might want to consider not attending an assessment center in terms of you might want to look at the details so at one point i got a lot of invitations to assessment centers and at that point i already had a job and i looked at the other company it was actually a better company company than a job offer that I had at that point. This goes like back before the offer that I currently signed that I will be starting on, but that's a different story. And they offered me a position somewhere in the north of England. I am not really able to move to the north of England. I live together with my partner. He has a job in London. So I am not able to just randomly move away to the north of England. And at that point I already had a job offer secured, which was actually based in London. So for me at that point, it didn't make any sense to attend that one assessment center even though the company was a bit more well known it just didn't make sense because i was never going to take that particular offer over the offer that i had already have so please also look at the details if you have that luxury to sort of figure out if it is actually helpful for you to go to the assessment center because it takes an entire day it takes so much energy and time it's crazy so please if you have that luxury do check all the details check what particularly they're offering you if they already have a location for you and if it's stayed with you know what Whatever circumstances are not able to change it and it's somewhere way way out where you cannot be or do not want to be don't go to the assessment center two reasons you're taking up somebody else's spot and b you're just wasting your time and energy again also be prepared to be interviewed go in prepared know everything about the role etc etc but i think at this point you probably figured that out if you've got to the assessment center bit and i didn't decide to start counting until i saw this video and now i forget that i i'm stranded at <laughs> 
um, spend it at nine. So I unfortunately do not have a 10th point to make. Um, so these were my nine sort of main takeaways from the entire application process. Good luck on applying. It's a hassle. It's not fun. It's a discouraging process, but you can do it. Just push through it. It's just the way it is. Just don't give up. Just continue applying. It's a weird process, but in the end, if you get that graduate scheme, it's worth it. And good luck. Please like, comment and subscribe if you like this video. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Thank you.